Hi guys, Buildzoid here, and today we're going to be taking a look at Astrox's uh, Astrox budget motherboard VRM. The one that they use on the B350M Pro 4, the B350 Pro 4, the B350 Gaming K4. All of these motherboards use this VRM right here. Um, and right here, the photo I'm actually working on is from a... Uh, B350M Pro 4, so that's the MATX motherboard from ASRock, and the photo's been provided kind of by a one of the viewers, so thanks for the, thanks to him, that, you know, you, you should thank him that you can watch this video right now. Uh, so, yeah, let, with that out of the way, let's, let's get right into it. The vCore VRM is this thing right here, and I keep failing to highlight it properly. There, that's your vCore VRM. I'm, I'm just never gonna draw a straight line there, will I? Oh well. So that's vCore. This right here is the SOC VRM. Actually, I should highlight it like that. That's the SOC. Um, and uh, this down here is the memory VRM. So yeah, uh, the memory VRM I think changes from motherboard to motherboard. Um, it doesn't really matter a lot because DDR, like, it, uh, how powerful, like, you should not choose your motherboard based on memory VRMs because DDR4 doesn't really pull any power. Um, and the perfect example of this is, is that Asus on their, like, top of the line, uh, like, even on their top of the line Crosshair Hero and such, they use really cheap MOSFETs because it just doesn't matter, it's DDR4. Um, you could probably run it off of the ambient energy of the universe. If it came with solar panels, it could run off of that. Um, so, yeah. Um, memory VRM, it, I'll go over it, but it's really not important when choosing a motherboard. Uh, you know, it's not going to blow up on you or anything. Making or... You can't make a bad enough memory VRM for that. At least not without, like, without actually putting effort into it. Anyway, uh, let's take a look at the actual important VRMs, the vCore and the SoC. Both of these are controlled by this chip right here. And that is a ISL95712. That is a 4 plus 3 phase, 300 to 400 kilohertz, 450 kilohertz uh, voltage controller. It integrates two MOSFET, dri uh, two phase uh, drivers for two vCore phases and one uh, north bridge in the data sheet, but here it's going to be the SOC, SOC uh, phase driver. So the end result is that the motherboard has one driver IC right here and two driver ICs right here. And somehow we have one, two, three, four, five, six... Uh, inductors, which leads a lot of people to assume that this motherboard is a 6 plus 3, right? That's a 6 phase, and that's a 3 phase. That's totally a 6 phase, and that's a 3 phase right there, because this is 1, 2, 3. Unfortunately, um, that doesn't work. This motherboard is a 3 phase pretty much in every way except inductor count, because essentially what Astrox has, Astrox have done is uh, these, fa like, all of these components, like this high side MOSFET, that high side MOSFET, this low side FET, and this low side FET, and these two inductors, right, this one and this one, are in parallel. And they're all controlled by one driver chip, which can't switch them individually. So they'll turn on at the same time, therefore they're in phase with each other, and so, you know, it's a, it's a single phase. So the end result is that this is no 6, this is a 3 plus 3 phase VRM, and it runs like one, it just doesn't look like one because of the two inductors. Because actually, ASRock could have totally gone and gotten like larger high current inductors and put one per phase, except that would look really, really bad on photos when compared against other four phase motherboards, which you tend to find in this sort of, like four plus three phase motherboards, which you tend to find in this, uh, in this market segment. So instead, ASRock have this six, uh, this three phase that looks like a six, but really, really isn't anywhere near being a six. It's a three. It's not even like the. It's not even like there's dr doublers or anything. This is just a straight three phase with way too many components in each phase, 
And the end result is this is uh, capable power-wise. It, it won't have a problem powering even an 8-core, but it does kind of suck as far as I'm concerned. Uh, I, I personally would prefer a 4-phase as a 4-phase will general should run better quality. Um, just like the voltage should be flatter coming out of a four phase. Uh, it'll put less load on the 12 volt, uh, power supply because, uh, the problem with having like le less phases is basically you have more current in each phase. When that phase turns on that current spike shows up, like you get a bigger current spike on your 12 volt supply because of that. So that actually leads to the slightly worse voltage regulation. So basically... Um, I'd rather go for a four-phase motherboard than this motherboard right here because this is a three, even if it looks like a six. Um, however, in practice, I think you'd actually have to buy two motherboards and compare to see if there's any massive difference between them in terms of overclocking. Theoretically, a four-phase motherboard should be able to hit the same kind of the clocks at, say, you know, a couple millivolts less voltage. Um, it should also run potentially more efficient, wear out its 12-volt uh, capacitors slower, assuming that they're the same quality, and, you know, it, it gets complicated comparing it, but generally, more real phases is better, and this is a 3, so not a fan. Um, now then, power capability-wise, you're looking at, uh, well, this high-side MOSFET right here, that high-side MOSFET right there, Let's zoom out a bit, low side, and this low side. And for the high side MOSFET, the ASRock has chosen Sino Power SM4337 MOSFETs. So those are your high side FETs. And for the low side, uh, it's again Sino Power, but SM4336 MOSFETs. The end result of this MOSFET combination with the quantity that is in the VRM is that the absolute maximum rating of this VRM for V-Core power is about 156 amps uh, because you'll burn out the low side MOSFETs if you try to exceed that. Now, the great news is you don't actually need any kind, of, like you don't need to go anywhere near 156 amps. Uh, eight, core Ryzen, uh, eight core Ryzen CPUs in my testing with around four gigahertz, 1.45 volts, which is actually more than what you would want to run daily. Um, leads to about 100 amps current draw on the vCore VRM, which really isn't that much. And with this VRM, assuming 125 degrees operating temperature, 300 kilohertz switching frequency, right, running out of space that way, 300 kilohertz switching frequency, and 1.42 volts, which is actually a voltage I would run daily, uh, you're looking at only about 20 one watts of heat. Also, that might actually be lower depending on how uh, ASRock chooses to drive the VRM. I'm assuming they're just driving it with five volts off of the power supply, but they could be driving it with, uh, you know, seven or 10 even. But I, I think five, so they could actually get that efficiency to go, uh, well, they could have a lower heat output for 100 amps if they drove it with a higher higher voltage. Now then, uh, if you're running a 6-core or a 4-core, well, with a 6-core, you're going to be looking at about 70 amps at 4 gigahertz, 1.42 volts. So that only works out to about 11 watts of heat. And if you're running a 4-core, you're looking at current amounts below that. So this VRM is going to run ice cold um, if you're running a 4-core or a 6-core. Like, there's really no concern uh, with overclocking on, the mother on this motherboard with a with a four or six core uh four or six core cpu with an eight core i'd recommend try get some airflow over the vrm heatsink as uh you know 100 amps 22 21 watts is not a huge amount but that heatsink isn't that big the one that's sitting over it. it does have a decent amount of surface area it's just not massive so Try get some airflow over it if you're running an eight core, though. I ha or or you can just run the eight. You can run at lower voltage and lower clocks. If you're looking at like 3.8 gigahertz, uh, 1.3 uh, voltage ranges, then uh, 1.3 to 1.4 voltage ranges, then you know uh, you don't need to worry. Uh, you're not going to have that much heat output as Ryzen does get a lot more efficient if you're not trying to hit the 
ceiling of what, what it can actually do clockwise. So, you know, uh, that's sort of considerations for the vCore VRM. Now, the SOC VRM is very similar to the vCore VRM. You're looking at one high side MOSFET. Again, the same SM4347, as well as two low side FATs uh, in each phase. And those are, again, the SM4336s. Uh, however, due to the MOSFET combination that the SOC VRM has, you're looking at only 150 amps maximum current throughput. And uh, that 150 amps is achieved at much worse efficiency than the vCore VRM because you do have half the high side MOSFETs and that leads to much higher, higher power losses. I did not go ahead and calculate maximum heat output because generally that calculation spits out something. Like I do believe this was almost 70 watts uh, when I was check, just, you know, I, I was just doing my check and it was around 70 watts. So that's completely uncoolable. This ends up being even worse, so it's not actually a current rating you could actually hit on this VRM because it'll completely overwhelm the heat sink within a couple of sec like not even seconds. It, it would overwhelm the heat sink almost instantly if you actually tried to shove 150 amps through this three phase right here. And that's assuming the inductors would actually manage to survive that, which they probably wouldn't. So this 150A rating is, like, it looks close to this one, but the heat output would be so much higher that it's not comparable. Um, now then, for realistic power outputs for the SOC currently, um, you're looking at only about 30 amps out, and at that kind of current output, this VRM is going to be putting out maybe 3 to 4 watts of heat. Um, so really not that bad. The thing to keep in mind about the SOC is that in the future, AM4 will be getting APUs and those will need more SOC power as the SOC does power the IG, will be powering the IGPU portion of those. Or at least I believe it will because I can't see the vCore powering both of those anytime soon. And that's how it's been done on previous AMD APUs where the Northbridge and the GPU both ran off of the secondary VRM on every motherboard. So... Uh, you know, on, if you get an APU, the, this VRM becomes a somewhat more important, but we currently don't have APUs, and I don't know what kind of current draw uh, those would probably pull, so I haven't gone ahead and calculated what what kind of efficient, what kind of power out, heat output that would actually end up with. Now then, the memory VRM, uh, it looks like a two-phase. I really, really doubt it's a two-phase. Um, Mostly because this right here is a single phase voltage controller, but I'm not sure if that's actually hooked up to the memory VRM. It's really hard to tell from photos in, you know, such cramped, like this, this part of the motherboard is really cramped with components. Uh, the MOSFETs are the same um, as for the vCore VRM. I'm not sure which one's which right now because I can't see on the photo, but uh, yeah, current capability for the memory VRM is 52 amps. I mean, I do have a better photo that's more close up. I just don't know which one's high and which one's low right now here for this photo. Assume this is going to be the low side and that's going to be a low side. Or or maybe both of the high sides are right here. I'm not entirely sure. Either way, maximum current capability on this VRM is 52 amps. Uh, DDR4 doesn't need a lot of power at all. Um, at 1.45 volts, which is the maximum voltage I would recommend using for overclocking DDR4, um, you're going to be looking at, well, I don't actually think you'll even reach 10 amps, but if by some miracle you manage to hit 10 amps of power current at 1.45 volts, this VRM at 125 degrees operating temperature, 300 kilohertz switching frequency will output about one to two watts of heat. Um, because, you know, it, it's capable of 52 amps maximum. And the thing is this is the memory vrm so it doesn't like it it's generally in a pretty bad airflow condition so it does kind of make sense that it is capable of 52 amps but at the same time you know ddr4 doesn't pull that much power if you're running two sticks of ram it's gonna be even less current like this thing is pro this is gonna end up ice cold most of the time even with no heat sink or any kind of active cooling so yeah um so that's sort of that for the B350M Pro 4. Um, personally, I'm not a fan of a 
three phase. I'm not a fan of three phase designs, uh, especially like this. Um, I like I'd really like to take a look at some four plus three phase motherboards, say from Gigabyte or Asus, because both of those, both of them, uh, do four plus three phases in this price range. Uh, also, maybe MSI. MSI seems to be, I think, also does four plus threes. And honestly, I think a four plus three phase VRM should be better than this three phase that's posing as a six uh, six phase design, um, because. You know, more phases is just, like, it has benefits. There's a reason why you see GPUs always, you know, GPU makers always go like, oh, but we have 10, and we have 12. It does, well, once you sort of pass eight phases, it starts being kind of more, uh, more a marketing stunt than uh, necessarily practical, but when you're going between, like, three and four and five, up to sort of six, you, the, the gains can often be actually, like, they're often measurable, not just, oh, it's better on paper. So I'd like to see a four-phase design from one of the other competitors, and I'd also like to be able to test this VRM against another VRM because that would be really interesting as far as I'm concerned. Um, but if you do have these motherboards, you don't have to be worried about them blowing up on you or anything, uh, even if you have an 8-core, unless you decided that you want to hit 4.2 gigahertz on water cooling, um, because this motherboard really won't, probably won't survive that once you shove 1.5 plus volts through the CPU, which incidentally, I have gotten confirmation by somebody who has done that, that 1.5 volts degrades your CPU, so don't do that, at least not for long term, he, he took about 300 hours to, uh, end up with a less, like, end up with the degradation really starting to show up, so, uh, yeah, um, you know, honestly, I, I'm not a fan of the design, but if you have a board with it, I wouldn't worry, um, it might actually be good compared to some of the four phases, and that, that wraps it up, I think, so, yeah, thank you for watching, if you have any questions, you can ask them down in the comments below. If you don't know anything about how VRMs work, there are links down in the description to videos that explain how uh, VRMs both work, how doubling schemes work, like how does ASRock do this right here, which I think I actually explained pretty well right here right now, um, and all of that kind of stuff. There's also my Patreon, my PayPal, and uh, what else? AHOC shirts that you can, you know, use to support what I do here, and uh, that's about it. You gotta like, and you gotta subscribe if you haven't, and thanks for watching, and see you next time.